Hello, and welcome again to our final newsletter for Term 3. It's been quite an unusual term. I don't think I've ever had the, um, the experience of having remote learning for a whole term. And I'm sure it's tested all of us. It's presented great challenges to each and every single one of us, to the students, to the, the teachers, and to you as parents. Fortunately, we've got a break coming up, and I know that everyone is looking forward to uh, the two-week holiday break. Even though we haven't been together in a physical sense, uh, there is lots of exciting news to share with you in this newsletter. Uh, and some of those topics will include uh, a commentary on our recent NAPLAN results, as well as the big move, the big transition to Box Hill. I want to talk to you about some of the issues uh, arising out of um, our move to Box Hill. Okay, so let's begin with my commentary on our NAPLAN data. Now, I've made it very clear in previous editions of this newsletter that NAPLAN is not the be all and end all. And I think it's unfair to judge a school solely on their performance in NAPLAN. We need a consistent level of data over a period of time to make decisions about a student's numeracy and literacy ability. Having said that, our NAPLAN data was quite good this year. In fact, it was very good, very pleasing. Our students in Year 7 and 9 demonstrated significant growth in all the domains, in grammar, punctuation, in reading, writing, spelling, and in numeracy. The, uh, what was most pleasing was that the number of students in the bottom two bands had deteriorated significantly. And that is a great testament to our diversity team in helping those kids with learning needs access the curriculum in literacy and numeracy. So well done to our diversity team and to the students themselves. Uh, this year, we've had a particularly strong focus on writing. And can I, can I compliment our Year 9 students? Because your writing results were exceptional. The growth in our writing results across the board was phenomenal. So well done. So even though I'm not a big fan of NAPLAN, our NAPLAN results were very good. Can I now focus on our transition to Box Hill? In just over seven weeks' time, we're going to be moving to Box Hill. Can you believe it? The 8th of November, that's the date that we have put out to our, our community when we will move over to Box Hill. And uh, can I encourage you, um, our office ladies are telling me that we're getting lots and lots of questions each day about the move. So what we've decided to do is we've decided to put up on our web page a special section entitled Transition to Box Hill. Now if you go onto the website it's under news and um, news and events and you click on that and you'll see a tab and that'll say Transition to Box Hill and there's a whole page of information with information regarding our move over to Box Hill. Now, I know that for many parents, yes, we are excited about the new school, but transport is a major issue. Uh, and I want to just speak, quickly speak to this issue of transport. Now, currently, we have five private bus services, and they cover a wide range of destinations. We've got students from Bly Park all the way to North Kellyville, all the way to uh, Katai, Pitt Town, uh, as well as 
ratio and, and box seal itself. Now, this is a private bus service and we can dictate the pickup and drop off points because you are paying, you are paying for the service. However, the service is also being subsidized by our diocese. Over 50% of the bus services, the cost of the services, is being paid by the diocese. And the diocese have said to me, as long as you are not on your school site, we will continue to help you out with the cost of, of travel. Now that we will be on our school site from the 8th of November, that subsidy ceases. And so this, we've made the decision that uh, because we'll have public bus services supplementing the or complementing the, the uh, private bus routes, that we would cease all bus services except for bus number one. Now, you might say, well, why bus number one? Because bus number one is servicing an area where the company, the bus company in that area, Busways, has said to us they have no more resources this year to, to get those students from South Windsor, Pitown, McGrath Hill, Oakville to the school. But they have promised to review the situation over the Christmas break. Okay? So I know that um, even the, uh, the Hills bus timetable will be published. I know that, that some our parents are saying, well, that's not good enough. Uh, folks, it has to do for, for now. Until we can pressure Hills bus or, or bring up our local MPs and complain about it, that is the service that we have to use for the remainder of this year. Okay? And I know that Hills bus have structured, they've restructured their bus routes where every single bus has to go via the Rasio Metro station or start at the Metro and work its way to the schools. Okay? Now, we've got no control over what Hills bus does, but we've been lobbying them and talking to them and they have agreed to review it at the end of this year. Okay? But I urge parents that after the 21st of September, I urge all parents to go on to the SSTS. And that stands for Student Transport Scheme. And apply for an Opal Card. Because when you apply for an Opal Card, and you say that you are, your destination is Santa Sofia, Red Gables Road uh, in Box Hill, then it registers and that will then create a demand for bus services to that destination. So 21st of September, please I urge your parents to get on and register for an Opal Card for your, your son or daughter. Okay, to conclude, uh, before I have a section where I'm going to farewell Daryl Castellino, to conclude, I just wanted to share with you the value of silence and stillness. And I know that uh, in times when our mental health is not good, in times where we feel challenged, in times where we feel like the whole world is now uh, is on our shoulders, I encourage you to practice this stillness and silence. Let me give you an explanation as to how it works for me. So, for me, every morning for two minutes, and I do this particularly when I get up of a morning, I close my laptop, I turn my phone off, I clear myself of any distractions, and I sit on the edge of my bed in total silence. And it gives me an opportunity to 
just to clear my mind of everything. And um, I can assure you, this helps sustain me each and every single day. Just that two minute period of silence and stillness. Stillness is, it nourishes your spirit. It's like what food is to your body. Okay? It provides great sustenance to your, your, your spiritual being. Some people might say this is uh, an element of meditation or, or mindfulness. Call it what you like, but it certainly works for me and it helps me get through, uh, through the day. Okay, and now we're going to move on to a special section in our newsletter because this is when we get to say farewell to a great leader, a great friend of mine, a great colleague, and uh, I'm sure you're all aware that Daryl Castellino is, is leaving us, okay? And I've got Daryl in the room now with me. And in a minute, I'm going to ask Daryl to reflect on his four years at our college. But before that, can I just take you back to 2017? July 2017, I was, a prince, I was appointed to become principal of Santa Sophia Catholic College. And I had a six month window in which to plan for the first enrollments in 2018. And um, one of the first things I did was I, I reached out to Daryl. And I said, Daryl, because I'd, I'd worked with Daryl previously on a project that Daryl was part of the mission team in CDP, and he worked with me at St. Mark's on how to implement values across the curriculum. And I, I had a working relationship with Daryl from then. And I reached out to Daryl and I said, Daryl, I need you to come over and help me build the school. And what a privilege it's been. The privilege of starting the school from the ground up. With, a cat, with all Catholic values and to create a Catholic learning community. It's been a wonderful privilege. And I could not have done this without, uh, without you, Dale. Okay. Now, I know that uh, Walt Disney has a wonderful saying. And um, Walt Disney often says, he says, you can dream, you can create, you can design, and you can build the most wonderful ideas in the world. But to do that requires the right people. And it's true. I could not have got the school to the point that it's at right now without the assistance of Daryl. And the reason why I chose Daryl as my first recruitment was because Daryl is a very strong Catholic. And Daryl is the person that he lives his values daily in his interactions with every, every, everybody with students, with parents, with, with his colleagues, even with me. And um, that's the main reason why I chose Dell. Because if you want to be a great Catholic school, you have to have great Catholic teachers. That's my mantra. So, Daryl, I'm going to get you to reflect on um, the four years that you've been with us. Your achievements have been phenomenal. Um, I think your great legacy that you would leave with us, Daryl, is the prayer that you, you wrote for our college. Almighty God, you know, and, and, and so on. It, it goes on, okay? So just sit back, Daryl, and I'm going to ask you a few questions about your time at the college. And I guess my first question is, and I guess parents want to know as well and students want to know as well, is... Why are you leaving us and where are you going? I never had it um, in, I guess, in my mind that, you know, I wanted to, um, the end date of Santa Sophia Catholic College in terms of my own involvement. Um, but ironically enough, one of the things that Mark um, speaks about to all of us as staff, as colleagues and as a dear friend is that priority of family, health and then your work. And um, it ultimately came to that where 
where my son Joshua and my girls um, go to Tangara and the, the Joshua starting at Redfield and an opportunity came up there and I just knew it was best for the family um, and hence my decision to take Mark's advice and put my priorities straight um, and it was a very tough decision but I knew one that was best for my family um, for the kids, um, myself. So that's why, Mark. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you for sharing. And, and you know, um, I think it speaks to the character of yourself, Daryl. So, look, Daryl, what excited you most about coming to a new school, a new Catholic school, and being involved? Yeah. It's a good, it's a good question. Um, I guess it's... Um, it was something where I saw um, this opportunity, first of all, to really establish something out in the northwest of Sydney that gives families a good school that's grounded with, with the Catholic faith, that has a vision of building uh, men and women of good character, um, and to prepare them for, for life after school. You know, for, for me, that's important. And when I say that, I'm talking about, I'm talking about good fathers, developing good, ultimately good fathers, good mothers, strong marriages, um, people that are going to succeed in the workplace, um, people that are going to, you know, be good friends, um, be countercultural to really stand up for, for the truth. Um, and this was just a wonderful opportunity where we could mark all of those things uh, could be a possibility being a brand new school where we were planning curriculum, planning programs, um, developing um, a culture that wasn't there that we wanted to, what type of culture do we want to have with our staff, the closeness of the partnership with families. Um, so I guess those opportunities um, to actually build something from scratch and um, knowing that, you know, we were going to be having a very close partnership with the parish with your leadership, I knew that this, I just knew in my heart that this could come to fruition. Well done. Now, one of your great legacies that you leave behind, Daryl, is our college prayer. Okay. What was your inspiration for writing that prayer? Yeah. Look, it's, it, that, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, I guess when I reflect back at, in my own schooling, going to Patrician Brothers College, uh, Blacktown, and then teaching at Patrician Brothers Fairfield and uh, working in other schools, I can see that at the, you know, you, you leave your schooling and one of the things you remember is your college prayer. It's something that's prayed daily. And um, I guess I, was, I wanted, well, we wanted, um, I guess, the college to have a prayer that speaks to what we want, what our goals are. For our kids, when they ultimately when when they graduate, um, and for our families, and um, you know, I just also fell in love of with the name Santa Sophia because it because of that beautiful um, I guess vision of holy wisdom, um, but also you know the really um, strong story of Saint Sophia herself, and and in the prayer, um, I guess the intention was to to speak to. Um, you know, the, that whole idea of, of what's needed in the world, the people of true wisdom, you know, people of true character, people that have a life developed in faith, hope and love, but also wanted, part of the inspiration was to use the actual words of Saint Sophia. So what I did was did some research and I had a look at um, some historical documents, which was quite hard to find because she was an early martyr. Um, but the actual words um, of, of the prayer, Almighty God, you've called each of us by name, help us to do your holy will and never forsake us. Grant us thy holy aid. Those words, grant us thy holy aid, um, actually come from the story of, of Saint Sophia and the words that she actually spoke. And it's a prayer particularly that in the Eastern churches they pray uh, very, very strongly. So I wanted to, um, you know, to have some... I guess, grounding in our prayer that talks to the vision of what we want for our students, our staff and our families. Wow. It's giving me goosebumps <laughs> just listening to you. Daryl, reflecting back on your four years at the college, what is something that you're most proud of? 
Oh, there is, you know, um, this week has been one of those weeks where I guess it's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster with me and I'm reflecting back, looking at photos um, of um, 2017 when we were here, Mark, in an empty space with no admin building and for us planning <laughs> what 2018 and beyond was going to, to bring, you know, yeah. to us. Um, it's funnily enough, you know, having that time before the school started where yourself, uh, Lisa Calise, um, Cassie in the front office and me, we would, you know, sit down and we would really just, um, I guess, dream, dream of what type of school we wanted, dream about, you know, the possibilities, the programs, the type of culture we want. Um, and I really value that time because what it did allow was then when um, the school officially opened in 2018 um, for us to, um, you know, to actually, I guess, roll out those programs and those strategies. Um, what am I proud of? Look, I just see the culture that our school has. I just, I just, every day, it's finally, it, I didn't see it as a job. I loved coming here um, and just that positive culture that, you know, that I think uh, Mark was led by you and is just embedded, you know, um, with with all the type of the, the staff that we have. Um, you know, staff that are of good character, um, that, that take their faith seriously. We're, I just feel that, you know, our, our vision for the students um, are all aligned and it's, and it's just, you know, a pleasure. And I reflect back and I think, wow, what a culture, you know, we've, we've built and hopefully we'll continue to grow. And then, you know, it always just gives me so much pleasure when you get visiting either teachers or, or prospective parents come in and they think, wow, what is this place? Like it is buzzing with excitement, with, um, with such engagement um, that's, you know, something that I'm very proud of. And I just look back and I think, wow, that's, you know, that's so great. How we've embedded our, um, our faith into the school is something I must say that I'm proud. I go to, when I visit primary and I see those, you know, those little kids with the wonder and amazement and curiosity in their mind as they're, you know, either praying, you know, in front of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament or they're using their hands on material with salt. You know, you can be innovative, you can be creative, you can, um, you can really talk to this uh, contemporary, you know, pe young people in the contemporary world. But I just love how it's grounded also in tradition and grounded in truth and beauty, which, which you know, I'm very proud of the way that we've mixed, I guess, those two worlds together um, to really give our kids something of substance. Um, another thing I'm proud of, yeah, just how overall, I guess, when you talk about a holistic education, how we run these well-being programs, um, how we, the diversity, um, how we really look at the overall um, child um, with their talents, with their gifts, with their creativity, and how we allow that to really thrive and flourish is something that I'm very proud of, Mark. Well done, Daryl. That's, that's a lot to be proud of. Yeah. And in a short space of time as well. It is, four, four years. years. Yeah. Folks, we've, when Daryl and I first opened the school in 2018, we had 22 students. Next year, we'll have 1,400. And I guess it's all those, those reflections that you've just shared with us, Daryl, yeah. that's making us a brand, um, a school that people want to send their kids to. Any last words, Dell? Yeah, look, um, you know, there's there's so much I, I can say, but I really see this as a as a privilege, um, and I want to thank you, the parents, how you've allowed me often, I guess, to enter into your own lives, um, and and it is one of the things that I've learned, uh, particularly from from Mark, is that um, how how you must have a really good, I guess, relationship with your community and with parents. Um, now, in this room, as well as my office, I've met, um, you know, a lot of you uh, parents, you know, um, and there's been 
laughter, there's been tears, there's been struggles uh, with your kids, there's been um, a whole lot of things. Um, but I reflect back and myself being a parent, um, I really thank you for allowing me to, you know, enter into that that private space of, of you being a parent with your kids and um, and just the, the honesty that have come from those meetings, um, from the phone calls, from the text messages, um, all of those things. And never do I want you to feel like you are a, a burden in any way. Um, as I said, I feel privileged sitting back to think that um, I got to really be part of your families in a way um, to help, you know, your own sons and daughters. And I told a lot of you, um, being a parent, um, I can, you know, myself, I often sit in your seat when I'm dealing with your sons and daughters um, and think of them as my own child, um, you know, and how as a parent um, you do everything possible to do the best for them. So I just wanted to thank you for all of your support um, that you've um, that you've given me personally, uh, the confidence that that you've shown in me. Because often, you know, I would get messages like, uh, "Mr. Castellino, you know best. Just do it." You know, and for me, that shows a real trust, um, and 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 I feel really honoured um, in doing that because it's very personal, and um, I'm and I know that when kids come to school, you know, they don't leave family life behind we're all it's all connected you know there's always a backstory um and ultimately they're your sons and daughters so thank you um i'm going to miss this place very much i'm going to miss you know um i'm going to miss the students i'm going to miss the parents i'm really going to miss that interaction um, i want to tell you though that um you're in the best hands possible um i sit back um and you know this decision for me to leave also took a lot of took a lot of uh, discernment and prayer and I felt that you know God's used me here to um, you know to set up with Mark and the exec an excellent culture and I just see you know gosh the staff I mean how many is there in now Mark there's getting up to yeah we have over 100 next year there you go over 100 staff and um, and the way Mark has handpicked the staff of people of good character I want to let you know parents that your your children are in the best hands. Um, it's not a it's not a final farewell. Um, we will certainly cross paths, um, and and until we do again, um, God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks, Daryl. And I think Walt Disney was right in saying that you can have all the dreams in the world, but without the right people, it won't be a reality. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Okay. Good. Goodbye, parents, and uh, have, a, have a great break, and please stay COVID safe.